Hey y'all, so my final topic is what does the heal you look like and who is the heal you? Um, so let me be honest, I've re-recorded this several times, but the big thing, my big takeaway is um as I reflected in some of my journal entries for my gratefulness practice, I think I'm at like day 160 or day 159, so I'm almost to half the year. And I wrote down the other day that I'm grateful to know I need to love me even if God doesn't answer my prayers for marriage, um, for healing, this irregular bleeding, so that I don't have to have a hysterectomy for um, having additional kids, for a myriad of other things that I've been praying and asking God for. I have to love me even if those prayers are never answered in the natural. And Hill Marquita loves me in spite of everything that happened to me. Hill Marquita loves me in spite of my mistakes, the poor choices I made, the bad decisions I made, the ill-informed decisions I made. I love me in spite of that. I love me um, through all the changes and effects that the medications I've taken have had on my body. I love me if I wake up tomorrow and my hair is even frizzier than it is today. <laughs> I love me in spite of all that stuff. And Heal Marquita doesn't allow circumstances to change or define what loving me or loving myself looks like. And I think that was something I had to like really learn and get to because I love, I felt like I loved myself before, but I definitely was one of those people that would say, man, I can't wait to this thing goes away or I can't wait till this stops or I can't wait till this is over. And I was putting my life on hold for certain things to happen. Like I was critical of myself because I kept punishing myself for decisions I've made that have lasting lifelong effects. I kept punishing myself for things that were outside of my control. And when I think about two things, one, you know, the greatest commandments, as Jesus tells us, are wrapped up in two. Love the Lord, your God, with all your mind, your heart, your soul, and your strength, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And that's been like a recurring lesson, lesson for me, loving your neighbor as yourself, which means you have to love yourself. And I can't have healthy relationships if I don't love me properly, if I don't know how to love me properly. I can't have healthy relationships if I'm continuing to allow the things that happened to me as a child, as an adolescent, as a teenager, as a young adult, if I'm continuing to allow those things to anchor me to those points and to those mindsets and beliefs. I can't love others as I love myself or love others well if I am making how much I love myself conditional upon something happening that is outside of my control. So today I ask you, who has healed you? Who has the healed you? What does the heal you look like? What does the heal you act like? How does the heal you think? How does the heal you interact with other people? And how does that love manifest itself? The irony is that there were just so many things that were in divine sync and synchronicity um, for my life. Divine synchronization and synchronicity because I made decisions unknowingly that got me to this place. And I've recently found myself very frustrated with myself for decisions that I made Um that brought me to this place. It was like a quickening. All these things happened at one time where I got frustrated with people and, you know, something someone said to me, you know, it made me upset one day, but now I see, you know, on the other side, the truth to those words. And so as I continue to walk out my healing journey and walk into being healed Marquita and make decisions that healed Marquita would make, that means I have to love me 
even if God never answers those prayers, which means I have decided to surrender and let go of those things. I've decided that if God wants me to have them, I've already prayed them and I'm not going to keep asking for it. I'm going to love me in spite of it. And I know there is a scripture in, I think it's Luke chapter 11, uh, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking, the persistent widow. But I'm also um, aware that at some points you have to stop asking and entrust that thing to God and stand in faith, even when it doesn't look like it's going to happen. And I believe and know that God can do all things because he's done a lot of different things for me. He's answered prayers that I prayed a very long time ago and answered them in very grand ways. So I know he can answer those things that I'm, I'm praying for, but I feel my responsibility at this point is to stop asking and to move in ways and live my life in a way that makes room for those things that I'm asking for to come about. So if I'm going to be physically healed, Marquita, I have to continue to do those things that promote physical healing, continue to eat right and work out and get adequate rest. If, you know, I'm going to have healthy friendships and relationships, I have to have a healthy friendship and relationship with myself and so on and so forth. So that is what Heal Marquita is. I invite you and encourage you to discover and begin to live life as the heal you. So I hope you all have a great night. Um, I'm not 100% sure what the final days of me doing Taming Your Tongue and the 40-day word fast are going to look like. I'm going to just be obedient and do whatever God leads me to do. I'm also going to be beginning and fast later this week. Um, I'm supposed to start fasting with my church next week, but I'm going to start this week because the last almost nine months have been very eventful and I need a reset. I need a fresh start. I need a spiritual detox as well as a physical detox from all these over-the-counter medicines I've been taking <laughs> and from all the different things that I've been feeling. So I need a reset. And if there's anything I could pray for you about as I begin this fast of how long, I'm not sure, let me know. And aside from that, I hope you have a great start to your week. Bye.